if there's someone whose value we've started to raise in our minds because they've made themselves unavailable, which is a very common instinct. It's a very bad instinct, mm -hmm. but it's a very common one that someone's less available. So I start to attribute more value to them. Well, if we attribute more valuable, more value to them when they become unavailable, that we now get anxious because we really want to secure them because they're valuable. And we sit there wondering, how do I secure them? How do I secure them? How do I secure them? Ruminating, obsessing, even ruminating is a form of investment. Yeah. Right? Because the moment, if you're thinking about how to solve a problem nonstop, the problem feels like it's really important. You're investing in a person, even though you're not with them, you're investing in them in your mind. So at the moment, like five days later, after all of that work you've been doing and all of that obsession and all of that fear and all of that anxiety, when you get a message from them, it can be next to nothing. It can be, what's up? And you've got all this <laughs> adrenaline. And, this and you've been trying to figure out <laughs> how to solve this riddle of getting them back into your life. And you get a two, send, a two word message. Yeah. It feels like the most important thing in the world. And of course, when you get that rush of blood to the head, you, uh, how can it not feel kind of euphoric? Mm -hmm. How can it not give you an extraordinary feeling? And when you get that extraordinary feeling and those chemicals are released, you go, oh my God, I feel so strongly for this person. Yeah. But you don't feel strongly for this person. You feel strongly for the dynamic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's a big difference between those two things. Yeah. So, you know, we, we, it's about what am I chasing here? Am I chasing a feeling? Am I chasing an idea of value? And what is that value based on? Mm -hmm. Is it based on someone I think is just rare and difficult to get? Or is value based on how great of a person someone is in my life? How much they actually invest in me? What kind of teammate they are? What kind of energy they are? It, it, you know, that if we start valuing that more, which deep down derives from us valuing ourselves more, because you don't, if you, if you don't value yourself and you just value a feeling, well, you may as well do a bunch of drugs all day, mm -hmm. right? Because yeah. right? you just, that's, it's not, drugs might hurt me, but I'm valuing the feeling, not myself. If I value myself, then I think, what do I need to give myself in order to feel better? That's a much more conscious and intentional path to take. It's harder, mm -hmm. but it's, it, it's somewhere that leads somewhere much happier. I sometimes, I've had situations you know, you can take it outside the realm of love life. I've had situation in, uh, situations in business or work where, you know, let's say someone asks me to do their TV show or their podcast, and let's say it's just something I've always wanted to do. Mm -hmm. Like I've always wanted to go on this show. There is an instinct when you get that email that says, call them right now. <laughs> right, right, right. Call them immediately. Tell them we're ready. Tell them we could do it this afternoon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Like we could do it now because if they want, I'll get ready. Like I was, you know, yeah. I, I, I'm halfway across the world, but I'll fly there tomorrow. There's that instinct. And, you know, if that opportunity goes away because you didn't do it tomorrow, there's a feeling in us that beats ourselves up and says, see, I blew it. But it was never yours. Yes. It was a fly by night, like drive by superficial opportunity. If it can't, wait a day for you to email back and a couple of weeks for you to book it in, yeah. then you have to decide what your relationship is with opportunities in general. Yeah. Like, do I want to have that relationship with an opportunity where the moment an opportunity comes through the door, I am that opportunity's hostage? Mm. Is that the relationship I want to have with opportunity in my life, whether it's opportunity in business, whether it's opportunity in love? And we have to make that decision. And I got to a point in my life and I, it's not, I never get like activated in that way because something big can come through and I'll go, I'll feel myself going yeah. to that place. But these days I'm like, what relationship do I want to have with opportunities in my life? Mm. Well, I'm, I'm never going to be the hostage to an opportunity. That's cool. So if it comes through and it happens organically through just normal communication at a normal cadence in a consistent way and it happens then wonderful if it if it doesn't then frankly i don't i don't want to know yeah uh -huh. interesting Amazing. um i wanted to ask a follow-up on emotional availability and it seems like women used to be more in society emotionally available mm -hmm in i guess life and wanting more relationship and emotionally available and needing more from a man 
But I'm curious today from both of your perspectives, who are more emotionally available today? Is it men or women? What do you think? I think it's tricky to answer because the men I work with, the majority of the time, they're actually looking for something stable and they can't seem to access it with the women in this day and age. And um, I don't know if what's happened is because hookup culture has made women immune to connection now, they're kind of used to men just coming and leaving and not calling them and not labeling it, that they've always come in it, come into dating with that expectation. And when women lose the kind of driving force of the connection, men don't know how to lead emotional connection. So as a result, we've got endless broken relationships occurring. So I don't know if women are breaking their connection because they want to or because they've been conditioned to because of Tinder and Bumble, which has just created a bunch of people who haven't really got the skills to maintain long lasting connections or finding each other and then breaking up with each other, finding each other and breaking up with each other. I've had clients say to me, I met this beautiful girl. And when I met her and we hooked up, she was like, you can go now if you want. I know you want to go home. And he said, no, I want to get to know you. But she was so used to men being in that state with her that they've taken relationships and seen them as kind of vacations from their real world and they all go back to their real world once the weekend is over. So I think it's more society has conditioned people to not look for connection and because men tend to place the acceleration of connection in the women's hands and they're so used to it not being that direction, they've lost control of that and it's now kind of fizzling out for both genders. Interesting. Do you feel like people actually want to be in a long-term relationship, a committed relationship, or do they want to just have the feeling of a relationship for a weekend uh -huh. and be able to have it with multiple people but never fully go deep with people. It depends what she values in her life. If it, in this day and age, you can be 22 up until 42. So you can still have vacations whenever you want. You can still kind of live an Instagram kind of lifestyle. You can still go out with your friends. There's no kind of shame in being a woman who's a bit older, not married, no kids. You can still enjoy your life. So if that's something, if she values independence and she values freedom, then uh, she's not going to be looking for connection. She's going to place connection beneath what she values in life. And that's men and women. I would say that that applies to both but if somebody values and recognizes that their root of happiness is their relationships and their true happiness comes from when they don't need external stimulation and they don't need vacations and they don't need all of this they actually want someone that they can stay home and get bored and do nothing with if that's what they value in life that's it will depend on what they value and well what they value will depend on what they've experienced the most around them so if they've experienced people showing them investment they'll probably value connection more but if they've experienced being somebody short-term filling every weekend, they'll start to get immune to connection and invested in stimulation instead. Interesting. Mm. Have you, what have you noticed or seen around? I don't, I, like, I don't know. I find it hard to... The, so you're... For you, it's that men want connection, but women are so jaded at this point that... Mm -hmm. They're not offering it. Yeah, I feel like they now just go into it with a mentality that this man is probably going to be seeing other girls. He's probably going to be liking a bunch of pictures. He's probably going to be dating loads of girls on Tinder. I'm going to catch his dating profile, still be active. So instead of being the idiot in this situation, I'm going to take control and I'm going to replicate his behavior. And as a result, they're almost like, cheat first before being cheated on. And that's become the mentality. And I think social media has had an impact on that as well. But it's almost like women are like, I'm no longer being the girl that cries over a cheating boyfriend. I'd rather be the one that has a backup boyfriend than be on the receiving end of this humiliation. I have to say, yeah. it, it, that feels like the vast minority of women. Yeah, and I might be, but here's where I might be on this jaded end, because I get the jaded men mm. who've experienced those women, I probably lack access to the ones that are actually trying to just build a nice, healthy connection. It also feels like an interesting place to kind of pinpoint the issue, because I would say that, that even if what you said is true for the majority of women, which I think is the majority of women are actually quite the opposite of mm -hmm. that, that the, the issue is, would st I would still circle back to the issue as one of male un emotional unavailability. Okay. Because because of, of what we're saying is that there's so many emo like I I'm not even sure I subscribe to this, but w in that theory, there's so many emotionally unavailable men. Yeah. That they've managed to make the entire population of women cynical. Mm -hmm. 
to the point where they're now going, God, like I'm so, I I, so don't believe in the idea of a relationship anymore that I'm just going to mirror that behavior. Do you think men So the the issue would still lie with men if that was the case. I would argue it's more that the men the women want. I would say that the tiny minority of men that most women want are the ones that because of the alternatives and the options, they lack the investment. And as a result, the women's experiences, all men are like this, but there's so many nice men, just like there's so many nice women, but people aren't giving those people as much much of a chance. So it's almost like the popular kids in school are making the whole school look bad. But aren't men doing the same thing? Absolutely. I would agree 100%. Because men, because if if women are going for the top 1% of men, men are going for the top 1% of women and both are both are going to have a harder time being emotionally available than other people mm-hmm. because that's just a natural kind of well, when you have choice and a lot of it, yeah. then you're naturally going to be more difficult and, for so, and especially if you know you have ninety percent of people chasing after you. That's going to be a harder place to be available. So I just don't know. I don't know that I see a difference between the sexes when it comes to that. The only thing I would say is, um, even with men, not only are the top 1% going for the top 1% of women, even the lower end, the bottom 1%, are still going for the top 1% through OnlyFans and pornography. And so so this kind of soothing their emotional unavailability through pseudo relationships. So it's almost like um, the mid-range is there, but they're usually spoken for. So women in the dating pool are either experienced the top 1% who have loads of options, or the real bottom that have very little options but are so not used to human connection that they're a bit more addicted to pornography and video games and the that mid-range is more like they're already in committed relationships they're the hard they're, ones to find they're they're the yeah. ones with relationship skills they're already relationships <laughs> they already got the they got yeah. kids they're married mm-hmm. they're by that rationale we're talking about 98 percent of yeah. men are emotionally available mm-hmm. But you would say or, that's or, not, or, or they might be committed already. They might be, yes. I mean, I see good. There's, if that's true, if what you said is true, I see nothing but good news there. That the majority, <laughs> the vast majority of men are great guys who are emotionally available. But they may not be what women want. Or want they may not yeah, have the skills. They, they may not have the communication abilities. They, they may might not be have, lacking may, other things. They may not have maybe the financial. Height, I think height is a huge one. I, honestly, how like how big you, is height for women? I would like, say, like really though, are depend, women that superficial to sadly, think that height is that important for them? Depending on her height and her level of beauty, I would just say that like sometimes I meet men who are like five four five three and they'll say to me I really really want a beautiful girl in my personal experience with beautiful women what happens with them is they assume every man's super tall because that's all they've ever experienced they don't know how to compromise on attractiveness because they've never really needed to Mm. so they see the world through the lens of like I didn't know men come in a different size so they can be very shallow with that interesting but even unfortunately I think height is to women what facial beauty is to men so it kind of has that similar impact it's not definite but it has a similar impact 